normalize it in the calculator, you can take that value and then just plug it back in here. And the table A and B are the same. None of the other parameters get edited or changed. In this case, we don't need to do that because we haven't changed the injectors out. Okay, so now the next thing we're going to do is jump from our fuel tab over here into Spark. Now under Spark, we have advanced, retard, dwell, and knock sensors. We're going to be really focusing on changing things in advance and retard. Let's talk about our advance here area first. We have our base table values. These are going to be where the spark timing starts from. Then we have uh, modifiers that can be applied at the top of this. The ignition advance multiplier advance table can start to add values in conjunction with our base table. Then we have our knock control starting to reduce from those values. So we have our short and long term knock that we have going on. Um, in the base table, this is going to be the TGV's open engine already warmed up. The base B is TGV's open engine warming up. Base cruise is TGV's closed. And then base cruise B is TGV closed engine warming up. I like to make all my values in the table the same. Now with this, we need to consider how and what we're changing our values to. In this case, the first thing we need to consider when we're dealing with our spark timing table here is if we're gonna be making more power than stock. The break points here going out to 2.9, that would be equating equivalent to stock power or airflow levels. In this case, we know that we're going to be upping the boost and we're going to be making more horsepower. As a result, we need to go and rescale our engine load axes. This is a function of grams per rev, which is a function of air mass and engine RPM. And if the air mass increases because we're making more power, well, then we need to do a rescale. So that makes sense. Now, just as we were taking a look in our Excel spreadsheet here, uh, taking a step back to Spark, we have our area here where we punch some numbers in, so flywheel horsepower. I was saying 380, that'll give us about 304 wheel horsepower, which is about realistic for a bolt-on Subaru like this. We can see here, if we run it through our two different calculations here in the black, the, spark, the engine load rescale at 4,000, if we're making this power, we're gonna see a peak break point, about 3.3. We also see here, this is about 2.9 approximately for the engine rescale. Um, we wanna take the higher of these two values. So let's assume 3.3 for the rescale to make sure we have a little bit more range in the table in case for some reason we make a little bit more power it's able to scale a little bit higher in the table so that's the value i'm going to take here i'm going to go into my load rescale i'm going to go to right click go row axes I'm going to edit and here i'm going to type in 3.3 do equals and then i'm going to go from 2 to 3.3 and do a horizontal interpolation now i do need to copy all of these axes and make sure that I'm changing all of my tables the same. Unfortunately, it doesn't change that automatically in all the tables, doesn't, they're not linked together. Uh, other, soup, other HP Tuner uh, uh, applications, GM notably, if you change some of your axes, it'll change it throughout all the common tables that share it. It doesn't do that here. Um, let's go to row axes, let's go to edit, and we're gonna paste. And we're gonna go through all the tables here. So let's just run through, so right click, and we're going to paste. And finally, last table here, same thing, right click, row axes, edit, and we're going to paste. Okay. Now, the next thing here is to consider the values in the table, what we want to actually have for values. Now, first thing, I've rescaled it a little bit higher. So 2.9, that's the value that was here at the peak point of the table. We were previously running values of something like 9 degrees. Now, at the equivalent of 2.9 engine load, it's going to be running 3 4 degrees of timing. It's going to actually run more timing at the same load reference here compared to the previous scaling of the table. So keep that in mind when you're looking at this. If you start to do a breakpoint rescale, you definitely need to update your values in the table. What I'm going to do here is grab my values in the table. I'm going to go from about 1.6 load and higher, and I'm just going to reduce these by 6 degrees. I'm doing this specifically so I have safe ignition timing as a starting point. Now, if you're making a lot of power, uh, five, 600 horsepower, well, that might be too conservative. It might not be conservative enough. So keep an eye in mind of how you're changing this and, and editing it. So if you're scaling this up to something like five or six grams per rev, you might wanna really lower down your timing up top here. Something like zero degrees might be a smart idea. Um, and then doing a vertical interpolation backwards. So you have really conservative values to start off with to kind of feel the engine out and then calibrate and tune your spark timing values from that point. What I'm gonna do here is just do a minus six and do plus here. That's gonna subtract six. And it's just gonna get me in a, a conservative starting point um, to get things sorted out. Again, I wanna focus on the way and the reason I'm doing this, I wanna focus on my fuel calibration strategy first. I'll nail down the fuel 
then I'll nail down the boost control, then I'll start to walk in the spark timing. We always want to do that in order of operation. So it's always fuel, then boost, then spark timing. All right, let's go here. I'm going to copy my base table and all the rest of my other tables. Just make these all the same. So pretty straightforward here, nothing complicated. We're just making sure this is going to be applying everything evenly. Okay. Now the next thing we find here, we have our per gear compensations. I want to go ahead and zero all of the ignition gear compensation out for all of the gears. We don't want to have any offsets per gear. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.